Hello, can you hear me? Okay, if you can hear me, can you put a plus into the chat, please? Superb. And just double checking is the first slide that you can see an intro to acids and pH and some person's face wearing some glasses. Super duper. Right. Yeah, there's some questions coming in the chat. Is this for OCR? Do you know what? Chemistry is chemistry in my opinion. It doesn't really adhere to exam boards. It can be applied across the board. So yes, it's applicable to OCR. It's applicable to AQA. It's applicable to Edexcel. So there will be some nuances to AQA questions and OCR and Edexcel questions, but I'll definitely highlight when those questions come up, okay? Thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to do this. So let's just get cracking. <clears throat> so a lot of you have already put a plus in the chat if you can hear me. So thank you for doing that. I'm just going to talk about today's goals. Okay. So today is to help you get a deeper understanding about acids and bases. Um, I mean, I always ask myself, why are we even learning about acids and bases? Well, Hands up if you washed your hair this morning, you probably did it with a pH balanced shampoo. After, your sham after you washed your hair, you probably had a nice orange juice for breakfast. Well, that's acidic. I mean, I'm not gonna ask you if you like, prefer orange juice with bits or without bits. That's a value judgment and that's your own personal choice. If you got dropped off at school in a car, you, that was probably due to a lead acid battery, okay? So acids are all around us and this is why we're learning about this topic. In fact, there is a blood buffer system in each and every one of us right now, keeping your blood pH at around a constant 7.4. And we're gonna learn about how that works later on in these sessions, okay? So there is a point to learning about acids and bases, okay? Yeah, apologies. I tend to go on tangents about the history of acids and bases and chemistry, so bear with me. Um, and one last thing. The end of this, I'll tell you about my A-level exam preparation course so that you can decide if it's a good idea for you. So let's get to know one another, okay? So can you write in the chat what city you're from? And then I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Okay, Sheffield, London, Cambridge. Manchester, London, fantastic. Big up Londoners, any East Londoners in here? Perfectly on Thames, superb. Repping Tower Hamlets, fantastic. Gloucester, the green and pleasant land. Leeds, I've got a good friend from Leeds. They just say it as it is. Tottenham, superb. Any more for any more? Okay. Thanks, guys. So, thanks for telling me a little bit about yourselves. I'm gonna to talk to you about who I am because I think it's really important that you know some of the credentials about the person talking to you about acid and bases. So my name's Devinder, I'm the head of chemistry here at my ed space and I'm a fully qualified chemistry teacher with over eight years of experience. Last year, my exam class in year 13, they got 48% of the students got an A star or an A, which is a fantastic achievement. Uh, I'm a UCL graduate with a bachelor's in chemistry and I got a first class in my degree. After that, I stayed on to do a doctorate in inorganic chemistry and materials chemistry, also at UCL. So that's a little bit about me. I'm also from London. I'm a proud East Londoner. I don't know why I'm a proud East Londoner, but it's something that East London people are proud of being from East London. So that's a little bit about me. Um, there's some questions you go through year 12 and year 13. Some topics from year 12 I will recap, but this is predominantly gonna be a year 13 focused course. So how about some rules? I mean, teachers love talking about rules. Um, let's have a look at some rules that we can all follow so we can enjoy this stream, okay? And 
classic teacher statement here, there is no such thing as a bad question. I mean, this is absolutely true, but you've got to be brave enough to ask it, okay? Um, the likelihood is somebody else is probably thinking that as well. And hopefully we can iron out any misconceptions through those questions. So please don't feel embarrassed. This is a safe space, just fire away, ask some questions. There are also some moderators in the chat room um, and they're there to help me answer your questions, okay? Right, buckle in, let's go. Before we start, make sure you've got a piece of paper, you're making some notes. I'm a bit of an old school teacher. I will normally chalk and talk. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's good, activates cognitive modes as we're learning about things. So make sure you've got a calculator as well. And let's get cracking. All right, um, let's make this interactive as well. If I'm asking some questions, just participate. Samson answers in the chat. So, we've all done GCSE Chem. First question, define an acid. Let's go, people. Any ideas? So many, so many responses. Yeah, okay, proton, proton donor, okay? I mean, there are so many different definitions of what acids and bases are, and we're gonna go through some today, but Let's just say what an acid is. An acid is defined as a proton, and a proton is H plus donor. Not donor, like the kebab. Donor, it's something which is given out, okay? So what's given out here is a proton. Now, Arrhenius came up with this definition. Uh, you don't need to know that, but I think knowing a little bit of history is good because people tend to like stories. Uh, and he came up with this in 1887. Arrhenius was Swedish. Also not that relevant, but he was probably driving a Saab or a Volvo. Very uh, safe cars. Um, using that, can anybody define a base? What would a definition of a base be? Now I'm not talking about thumping music. Oh, nice. Someone's saying a proton acceptor. Before we go on to a proton acceptor, Arrhenius defined a base, and this is what we were used to from uh, GCSE. And that's the definition that I'm going to put there, but you guys are ahead of the game. He said it was um, a hydroxide donor, so a species which gives out OH minus. So, for example, if you take sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide usually comes in the solid form as pellets. And if you dunk that into water, so to symbolize I'm dunking that into water, I'm gonna put plus AQ on top of the goes to arrow. That species is gonna dissociate. Dissociate means to split up into Na plus aqueous and OH minus aqueous. So the fact that sodium hydroxide gives out hydroxide ions, it would be defined as a base, okay? Well done. Now, question number three, we've got a bit of a weird one here. Define a Lewis acid. Um, any, any ideas? You can just say, what on earth are you talking about? Write, write some stuff in the chat. If you don't know, you don't know. Okay, I think you should be aware of Lewis acids and Lewis bases. It's okay if you don't know what those are. Let's have a look at what those are. Um, so a Lewis acid, so Lewis acid is named after the bloke who discovered Lewis acids, Jen Lewis, fantastic chemist, um, saw things differently to other people. And a Lewis acid is defined as a species, and let's get this definition down, a species which accepts a lone pair of electrons, okay? Now this isn't a moot or trivial point. I'm not just saying this for Bantz. There is a reason why I'm talking about Lewis acids and Lewis bases will tie in nicely with this topic. So a Lewis acid is a species which accepts a lone pair of electrons. A species which could accept a lone pair of electrons could be H plus. Okay, using that definition, let's have a look at then what a Lewis base is. If we're looking at it from the lens of lone pairs and an acid is defined as a species which accepts a lone pair of electrons, what do we think the definition of a Lewis base is going to be? Excellent. So a base, a Lewis base is a species 
which donates a lone pair of electrons. Off the top of your head, can you think of any species which are lone pair donors? We're going to visit one quite a lot in this session. You might have come across it in organic chemistry quite a lot. Yes, peace plays, ammonia. So, ammonia has a lone pair of electrons. It can donate that lone pair of electrons. So, it is by definition a Lewis base. Does AQA need to know this? Um, the more you know, the more prepared you are for your exams. So, and that brings us on to more traditional specification type questions, okay? So what is a Bronsted-Lowry acid? So what is a Bronsted-Lowry acid? And you said this right at the beginning, it's the same as the Arrhenius definition, okay? So Bronsted-Lowry acid is defined as an H plus donor. And let's have a look at some typical um, acids that you might have come across at GCSE and A-level. So for example, if we take HCl gas, we dunk it into water, i.e. AQ, what's going to happen to that acid when we put it into water? Is it going to stay associated, i.e. intact, or is it going to split up? Yeah, it's going to dissociate, right? What's it going to dissociate into? Yeah, it's going to split, absolutely. So it's going to split up into H+, and Cl-, okay? Ooh. Okay, excellent. There's a problem with this. This isn't, strictly speaking, the correct way of how HCl dissociates. And the reason for that is, has anyone seen a problem? That H plus ion is hideously small, okay? It's very small and has a high charge density. You might know, you might get a question on this. So it's got a high charge density. So what you're saying? Well, that H plus ion is not going to exist in isolation, okay? It's not gonna exist on its own in solution. So this is a sort of simplified version of acid dissociation. It is good enough a lot of the time, but strictly speaking, if we take HCl and dunk it into water, this is what actually happens. Now, this loses an H plus because it's the acid. And because of that H plus ion isn't going to exist in isolation, the H2O accepts the H plus ion to make H3O plus and Cl minus. Now this has a technical name. This is called the hydroxonium ion. Okay. This is how the H plus actually exists in solution. Okay. Now I'm going to do a little bit of shapes and molecules revision. Water is usually bent linear. Now one of those lone pairs of electrons bonds to the proton. And this is the shape of the hydroxonium ion. And there is a plus charge on there somewhere with a dative covalent bond as well. So what shape do you normally have if you have three bonding pairs in one lone pair? Answers in the chat. Don't be shy. Yes. Yeah, this is for OCR. Yeah, it's, it's across the board. Not tetrahedral. Tetrahedral would be four bonding pairs and zero lone pairs. You've got three bonding pairs, one, two, three, and one lone pair. So this is pyramidal. Bond angle of 107 degrees. Okay, so not tetrahedral. So this is just a little bit of recap, okay? Now, let's move on swiftly because we're going to use that idea and have a look at something called acid base pairs through the lens of the ammonia problem so the problem with ammonia is that we know that ammonia is a base okay however 
and it neutralizes acids. Problem is, if you dunk NH3 into water, it's not massively obvious that you get OH minus ions, is it? The fact that you don't get OH minus ions can it be categorized as a base? Well, let's have a look. So, let's write this down. So this is what happens when you take ammonia and you actually dunk it into water, okay? And anytime you've got an acid-base problem, what we're really doing is just following the proton. Acid-base is about the interplay of protons being lost and accepted. So let's have a look at what's going on. Now, in the Western world, we read from left to right. Not all countries read from left to right, but we're going to start here and have a look what's lost protons and what's gained. Out of ammonia and water, who's lost a proton? Answers in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. Water, good. The very fact that it's lost a proton, what does that make water here? What is it doing if it's giving out protons? Is it acting as an acid or a base? Yep. Excellent. It's acting like an acid, right? Something we all we said right at the beginning, any species which gives out a proton is acting like an acid. If that's acting like an acid, this must be gaining H+. Plus. And if that species gains H+, plus, what does that make it? That isn't the acid. That is the, the opposite of that. That makes it the base, okay? So, once we've looked at the left-hand side, what we're going to do is move on to the right-hand side. Let's call them the products because that's what we call them. And we can do a reversible arrow if you want to because it is a reversible reaction here. Let's have a look at the ammonium ion NH4+. Going from right to left, what's happened to the ammonium ion if it forms ammonia from right to left? Has it lost a proton or gained a proton? Ooh, let's have a look. So, ammonium, so we're, you're right if we go from left to right, but this time we're going the opposite direction. So, ammonium starting as NH4 plus going back to NH3. What's happened there? It hasn't gained one, it's lost one if we go back in the opposite direction, okay? So, if it loses NH plus, this is an acid. Well, that H plus isn't going to be floating around. The hydroxide can accept. The H plus, so it acts as a base because it gains. And look at what we've got. We've got pairs of acids and bases, okay? We call this conjugation. I didn't do languages. I'm not particularly good at languages, but I think that's a thing in languages, conjugation of verbs and stuff like that. And what we're saying here is we're linking protons, okay? We're linking, sorry, acids and bases. How do you know what loses and gains? We just follow the protons. So for, let's have a look at the left-hand side again. Here, the NH3 went to NH4. It literally accepted a proton. The fact that NH3 accepted a proton must make it a base. And if you go back the other way, it must make it an acid from going from NH4 plus to NH3 and vice versa for H2O and OH minus, okay? So what we're gonna do to conjugate, to link up acids and base pairs, we're gonna use some arrows. Obviously, it's chemistry, so didn't mean to do that. So NH3 is linked to the acid NH4 plus. H2O is linked to the base OH minus, and we call these conjugate acid base pairs, okay? We're going to practice this phenomenon, and all we're doing is tracking the proton. We're not going to look at the reversible uh, reaction. We're just going to look at the forward reaction from now on, okay? And by the way, this also fixes the ammonia problem because when you put ammonia into water, you generate OH-, okay? So the Bronsted-Lowry definition is it gains a proton. Yeah, true, but it also does give out OH- ions in solution as well, so it does neutralize acids. So Arrhenius was correct, but he just didn't know it. 
uh, Bronsted Lowry came along and fixed the problem. Okay, <clears throat> work for examples. So, need lots of participation here because what we're going to do is we're going to identify the acid and the base but only on the reactant side. So, let's have a look at the first one. Out of H2O and NH3, who loses a proton? Does H2O lose a proton or does NH3 lose a proton? Yeah, H2O loses a proton. The fact that H2O loses a proton, what does that make it? Is it an acid or a base? Yep, absolutely. So we're going to put H2O here. And if that is the acid, by definition, the NH3 must be the base. It accepts that proton because it's not just going to be floating around. Okay, let's have a look at the second one then. Answer the chat, please, for number two. On the reactant side, who loses protons and who gains protons? So put the species and either loss or gain next to it in your response. Yeah. HCl loses. So if HCl loses, it must be the acid. If that's the acid, by definition, the H2O must be the base. Um, in teacher training, they always ask you uh, not to ask students if they're getting it and if they're understanding it. But I'm going to break that rule. I'm just going to say put a plus in the chat if you're roughly understanding what's going on. Top quality. Okay, question number three then. More is more. Let's practice. Question three, can you say who loses a proton and who gains a proton? Put your answers in the chat, please. Yes, good. That is the acid, it loses a proton. That is the base, it accepts a proton, okay. Question number four. So I'm gonna pick up the speed because once you get your eye in, you'll be quick. Yes, these plays. HCl loses. If HCl loses, that makes HCl the acid, makes this the base. Okay. Question number five. Who loses? Who gains? Yep. HCl is the acid, therefore NH3 by definition is the base. Okay. Question number six. It's gonna, it's, it's not, re it doesn't get any trickier than this, okay? But it's good to do some harder ones. So you've got the bicarbonate iron reacting with a hydroxide iron. Who is the acid? Who is the base? Yeah, H3O minus loses, correct. Therefore it is the acid and the OH minus is the base. Okay. For question seven, just think about a tiny little bit before answering. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. Keep going. Keep keep chatting. Lots of people saying H3O minus is the acid. Now, actually, H plus is the acid, okay? Yeah, B's place is right. So the carbonate ion, I'm just going to do it up here. Just... So this is the HCO3 minus ion. That's what it looks like, okay? And literally, that is accepting the H plus ion in some way. Okay, who cares about the bonding just now, but it's accepting the H plus ion, okay? If it is accepting the H plus ion or gaining an H plus, it must be, by definition, the base. So question seven is a bit of a weird one. Okay, question eight. And by the way, question eight, you'll see again in organic when you're looking at benzene. So question eight, who is the acid? Who is the base? Yeah, 
H2SO4 loses, that is the acid, excellent. Therefore, HNO3 is the base. And what we're really saying here is that sulfuric acid is a stronger acid than nitric acid, okay? And we're going to have a look at acid strength later on. But we definitely got this down, so let's move on. Yes, this is to make nitrobenzene. So superb. All right, really, really, really solid start. So let's keep up the pace and let's have a look at the pH scale. So the pH scale, like we're all familiar with the pH scale. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to inspect it in a little bit more detail and just take it up a notch, okay, for A level. So if we've got a hydrogen ion concentration in moles per decimeter cubed of 0 0.1, the corresponding pH is one, okay? So imagine we had a hydrogen ion concentration of one mole per decimeter cubed exactly. Any idea what the pH might be? Any suggestions? Okay, let's have a look. So if we have a look at the hydrogen ion concentration, we're dividing it by 10, going from left to right, okay? If we take a look at pH 2, which has this hydrogen ion concentration, we go up to pH 3, we've got to divide the hydrogen ion concentration again by 10, okay? So every time, so every time we're dividing the hydrogen ion concentration by 10, what's happening to the pH? The pH is going up by 1, okay? So what we're saying here is, yeah, B's place is right, it's zero, okay? So, this is a special type of relationship. I say it's special, it's not special, it's just that we haven't seen many of these relationships in um, AS chemistry, but in A2 chemistry, we see these sorts of relationships. Does anybody know what type of relationship this is when the hydrogen ion concentration is decreasing by a factor of 10, and then the pH is going up by, by one unit? Um, if you've like Neil does maths, yeah, absolutely. This is a logarithmic relationship, okay? Log base 10. So this is a log base 10 relationship. Between pH and the hydrogen ion concentration. Notes, square brackets for concentration, okay? Now, as uh, some people correctly said, you can have pHs of zero. In fact, you can have negative pHs. If you have a look at something like magic acid, which is antimony chloride based, you can have negative pHs. It's just a measure of solubility. If you can dissolve it in water, you can have negative pHs, okay? So it's just a scale looking at the concentration of hydrogen ions. That's all pHs, okay? Let's move on and have a look at the definition of what pH is. Make sure we've got a pen in hand, we're actually writing this bit down. So pH is defined as the negative log base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration, okay? Now, strictly speaking, that isn't the most accurate definition of pH because we know that H plus is too small to exist in isolation. So what's it really going to exist as? We had a name for it, H3O plus. So it's going to exist as a hydroxonium ion. So you can put either one of these. So it's the negative log base 10 of the hydroxonium ion concentration. Now, any time they ask you a question on, good question, but why negative log? We'll have a look at that in just a second. Brief answer, it makes the pH values positive, okay? Because we're looking at hydrogen ion concentrations usually of less than one, end of. Now, any time they say not give some long extended pros into deep thoughts about what pH is, just put pH is this. Just put the mathematical equation. That's it, put, put the formula. Make sure you put a box around that, learn that formula, okay? Now, what is a log? Any ideas? 
Any mathematicians in here? What is a log? I'll give you five seconds. If I don't get an answer, I'll attempt an explanation because I consulted Neil does maths and he has uh, helped me answer this question. So what is a log? Yeah, a function used to find power. Yeah, that'll do. So let's hand if you just put in the chat, put a plus in the chat if you don't do um, A level maths. Cool, it's not a problem, okay? We don't really need A over mass for chem. It's not that big a deal. So we can try and explain it from first principles. Now, a log. So log base 10, or any log for that matter, but so log base 10 is defined as, or is the number that 10 is raised to in order to return that number. So log base 10, I should have said, of a number. Now, seems like what on earth has he just said? Let's have a look at this, okay? So by the way, 10 is our base here, okay? So for example, log base 10 of 100 is equal to what? If you're doing maths, don't answer, just keep that number into your head. Let's have a look at how we're gonna explain this, okay? So, our base is 10, and we have to raise that to some number in order to get 100. So what do we, what power do we need to raise 10 to in order to get 100? Yeah, two, absolutely. So what you're saying is 10 times 10 is equal to 100, okay? So what does that mean log base 10 of 100 is? Log base 10 of 100 is equal to two. Happy days. Log base 10 of 1,000, quickly as you can, what is it? power that we need to raise 10 to in order to get a thousand so it's going to be three okay now that'll do for us we're not as uh, mathematically minded as all the mathematicians and physicists that's okay it will help us later on now let's reverse it let's flip this um let's say i want to unlog something i want to take the anti-log of something so for example Log base 10 of a number is equal to 1.5. How can I get rid of that pesky log on the left-hand side? What is the anti-function to the log? A uh, natural log would be, yeah, but it's not natural log. So it would be 10 to the power of. So 10 to the power of gets rid of that, and I need to do 10 to the power of to both sides. So that value is going to be 10 to the power of 1.5, which I believe is equal to 31.62, okay? Are we in maths? No, we're not in maths, but um, we, we use maths, okay? Maths is a really useful tool, obviously, and for physical chemistry, you can't escape it. So apologies, but no, no apologies, really. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, I hope that makes sense on a really sort of simple level of what logs are, okay? Working out a logarithm on your calculator. Now, this is also not a moot point. Now, if you've got a calculator to hand, let's just have a look at how we work out logs on our calculator. So, for example, you've got the log button there. <laughs> Rather this than organic, yeah, me too. Um, but press that log button, L-O-G, base, can be whatever base, put base 10, ofs, because we're looking at pH. Put 100, organic is R. Yeah, it's, um, if you like organic, you like organic, yeah. Uh, two, we can do maths, okay? So that's how you use it on your calculator. Now that was not trivial. It's really important to know how your calculator works and putting the numbers in the correct way, okay? 
So that's how you work a logarithm out on your calculator. So let's just hide the calc and let's get back to the pH formula and the hydrogen ion concentration formula. So this is really worth honing in on and listening. So pH, formula number one, if none of that made sense, don't worry, just learn the formula and learn how to use it, okay? Benzene rings make you wanna cry. Um, we'll fix it, don't worry, we, we can fix it. So pH is defined as minus the log base 10, hydrogen ion concentration square brackets for concentration. Formula number one. Somebody asked why negative logs, uh, they make the pHs positive, that's why. So if we wanna do the opposite, if we wanna work out the hydrogen ion concentration, well, the hydrogen ion concentration is defined as 10 to the power of minus pH, okay? So make sure you've got those two down. And now let's apply, okay? Yes. Okay. Any questions before we move on? If not, I will take your silence as acceptance. So, example question. Right, let's do this together. Calculate the pH from the H plus. Is there enough time? Where there is a will, there is a way. Um, if you join these lectures and if you are committed, of course, I've seen it before, okay? So let's not panic just yet. So let's have a look at something like this. This is a, what's a one mark question, say, okay? And you just be a starter type of question for the acid base topic. So calculate the pH if the hydrogen ion concentration is that. How are we gonna do this? Answer in the chat, please. Yeah, okay, I know, I know it's one, but if we're gonna long it out, we can just say that pH is equal to minus the log base 10 of 0 0.1, so pH equals one. Super. Chem is not the worst. Chem is the best. So, example number two. Okay, you can't just uh, do that in your head. Calculators at the ready. Answers in the chat. Let's see if you can beat me. So, I mean, you should be able to beat me. So. Is it 3.25? I mean, could well be. Yeah, okay. So pH equals minus a log of 5.6 times 10 to the minus four. Let's have a look. Minus the log base 10 of 5.6 times 10 to the minus four and have a look how I'm putting it in okay it's really important yeah 3.25 happy days anti anti log gang so 3.25 now also not a moot point also not a moot point can we make sure you always quote pH values to two decimal places okay always If you quote to one DP, you're probably just not going to get the mark. The examiner's going to say, nope, not happening. So, calculators at the ready. Can you calculate the pH from the hydrogen ion concentration? That should say H plus. From pH, off you go. Right, let's have a look, yep. If we're all getting the same answer, we're probably right. So, interesting, some people are getting some negative values here, okay? You can't have a negative value of concentration, okay? It would make that unphysical. This is a physical quantity. If you have a negative concentration, um, doesn't make sense physically, okay? So let's have a look at how I'm gonna do this. So, shift log okay we're unlogging it or doing the anti-log okay i'm going to put minus 2.80 in and 
Robert's your father's brother, as they say in East London. So, 1.58 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay. Right. Let's move on. Okay. So, you're given the pH here. So why is it minus 2.8? I'm just gonna flip back because working out the hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the power of minus pH, okay? So let's just learn this one. I talked about reversing the log, you do 10 to the power of, so that's why it's 10 to the power of minus pH. So we get positive values for the hydrogen ion concentration. What exam board is this for? All exam boards. So. If you got those wrong, let's just have a look. If the pH is 12.8, how do we work out the hydrogen ion concentration? It's going to be 10 to the power of minus 12.8. Let's do this. So, shift log minus 12.8. Bang, 1.58. times 10 to the minus, hideously tiny, hideously tiny, small hydrogen ion concentration. Because the pH is greater than seven, so this is basic, okay? Nothing wrong with being basic. It's been called that many times. So, five questions. Write your answers in the chat, off you go. Okay, with the speed of a thousand gazelles, we're just going to write some of these down. So I'm not going to do the working out for all of these, but for the first one, it's a pH of two. Okay, let's have a look at question two. It's going to be negative log of 0 0.025, so it's going to be 1.60. Hands up if, or not hands up, but Sorry, it's an old habit. Um, plus in the chat if you're getting these correct. Plus in the chat if getting these correct is making you happy. It's okay to take comfort from chemistry. Okay. 1 times 10 to the minus 7, obs, the pH is going to be 7, okay? When you've got a hydrogen ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the minus 7, the pH is equal to 7. That's your neutral point at room temperature and pressure. So... Final question, question five, pH is equal to, I need that comfort, no it didn't, it's fine, we can fix it. Now, for the last one, the pH should be equal to 9.12, hurrah, happy days. Okay, last part of this lesson, we're just going to flip it, make sure we're practicing the skill that we learned in today's lesson, because practice makes permanent if the practice is done correctly, obviously. So, from the following pHs, can you calculate the hydrogen ion concentrations? Off you go. And I will do this with you and write down the answers with you guys. Just think about how we're gonna do this as well. If you've forgotten the formula, the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 10 to the power of minus pH, okay? Yeah, good. So for the first one, you should have got hydrogen ion concentration of 3.8 times 10 to the minus four. For the second one, you should have got hydrogen ion concentration of 0 0.063, good. I'll give you just like another minute or two to get these done. Yeah, absolutely. So question number three, 2.24 times 10 to the minus six. Question number four, 
pH of 8.4, well, that pH works out to 3.98 times 10 to the minus 9. Good. Okay. And then finally, pH of 13 is going to be a really, really low hydrogen ion concentration. It's obviously going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 13. Shabash. Right. We'll leave it there. Okay, I had some uh, dilution type questions, but we'll leave that for Thursday's uh, stream. So please sign up to that, but please don't go away just yet. Okay, um, put plus in the chat if you found that useful. And we're just going to skip these dilution ones, but we're going to use all the skills that we learned in today's lesson in subsequent lessons. Okay, now these streams are going to be running Tuesdays and Thursdays, same time, same place with me. So now I'm just going to break down some information for those of you who want it. And I'd really appreciate if you'd stay on. Okay. Um, we're, we're all here because we want to get the best grades in your exams. Okay. Top, top grades in your exams. And there were some questions right at the beginning. Can you go from D to whatever? Yeah, you can. And I truly mean that. Okay. Um, you've just got to put in the work, put in the work and ask questions and ace the past papers and you will get the grade that you deserve okay and that'll be the top grade and i can also help you get that a a star in your a level chemistry exams okay it'll be stress-free and you'll be spending less than five hours a week on extra classes with me and by the way i actually love chemistry i love talking about chemistry and helping people with chemistry so what's included in this course and talking about the pro package here you'll be getting two live lessons every week that will take place on YouTube. And not only that, you're getting 24 seven mentor support. Okay. So if you've got a problem, you just contact your mentor saying, Oh, I don't get you know, what that guy was talking about when he was talking about pHs and hydrogen ion concentrations, your mentor might be able to give you a better answer. Maybe you also get workbooks. Okay. You get video solutions. So for example, if I set homework, from those homeworks I set, you'll get video solutions to those homeworks. You can watch in your own time, going through at your own pace, okay? Trying to make sense of what's going on. And not only that, if you don't understand something, you reach out to your mentor, bang, you get a response. You get study notes. Um, so study notes are a bit like what we're doing in lesson, but maybe in condensed format, just saying, this is what you need to know. Here are some questions and here are the worked answers as well. Okay, how many hours is each lesson? So each lesson is normally gonna be two hours. Uh, homeworks are one hour long normally. Okay, the homeworks also allow you instant feedback after each lesson. So if you put a question, so I've put, give you a question, you put an answer in, you know straight away if it's right or wrong. Okay, so you're getting that instant feedback straight away. Um, you've got 14 day guarantee money back. OK, so there's actually no risk associated with this. If 14 days you realize don't like it, get your money back. You get access to the community, more than 40,000 students. Absolutely huge. And we're human beings. We like doing things as part of a community. So be part of that. Be part of something. OK, uh, like I've just uh, said, to protect you from any risk, we provided a 14 day full refund guarantee. So ultimately there is no risk, okay? Uh, some question in the chat, are the lessons with other students at set times? Ah, that's an FAQ, but they will be recorded. So if you miss a lesson for whatever reason, and you can go back, watch them in your own time, okay? So they will be recorded and uploaded to the platform. And let's just break, some, break down some key figures. So students that are currently studying with us, there's around 30, more than 1,300, okay? 90% um, of students recommend my Edspace. Why wouldn't you? And 82% of students got a desired or higher than planned grade. I mean, that's absolutely astonishing, okay? Have a look on Trustpilot. People like leaving reviews, but on Trustpilot, we've got a rating of 4.9 out of 5 from the 161 reviews that we have. So also phenomenal figure. Uh, I'm not gonna go through these, uh, the minutiae, but have a look on Trustpilot. Those 
those reviews are legit, they're genuine, We've got hundreds of five-star reviews. So just have a look at what people are saying about us, okay? You already put a plus into the chat if you like this course. And we're gonna talk about the price. So the price of the course is 700 pounds. Don't panic. And let's just think about what you're getting for that, okay? So you're getting live lessons with me twice a week plus recordings. You're getting exam style homeworks with video solutions and instant feedback. Detailed video solutions as well. You're getting professionally designed revision materials. And like I said, you're getting a community of like-minded learners, okay? We humans, we like doing things as a community, being part of a little tribe, or well, be part of the tribe. You're also getting 24-7 mentor support, okay? So you've got a mentor on tap. And you've also got the opportunity now to get 44% off. So that means the new price will only be 393 pounds and not 700. And that equates to 490 per hour, which is 10 times cheaper than lessons with private tutors, okay? Um, so it's, it's an absolute steal. And we can split the price into two equal installments for you as well, okay? And this discount will be valid until midnight on Friday. So take advantage. So just so we know that you're at the live stream, your word is acid. So can you please email the team if you wanna sign up to the course, message acid to one of the team and they'll get back to you about joining the course, okay? FAQs. If you've got any questions about the pro or the standard, just please reach out to the team and they will give you all the information that you need, okay? So like one of the questions that we had in the chat for, what if you miss a lesson? Well, not a problem. You can access all the recordings and the learning materials on the online platform. So not a problem. Will you get enough attention? Well, yeah, I hope I've sort of answered most people's comments in the chat, but with a pro plan, you'll also be designed, or sorry, you'll also be assigned a personal mentor. They're available 24 seven to answer your questions and assist with homeworks provide extra tasks if you're keen to practice more after completing your assignments, okay? How do I ask for help? Well, loads of people are just asking for help then. You, you, first of all, you have to have the courage to ask, and then you've got direct chat access to your mentor for any questions. You'll also be joining the UK's biggest chemistry community for extra support from peers. So for live assistance, just ask during my stream and I'll respond on the spot. Will the lessons be useful for me? I mean, uh, I suppose it's a value judgment, but yeah, it's a, it's a legitimate question. Will they be useful for you? Or well, I hope you found them useful. 82% of our students achieved or surpassed their expectations. You also got this money back guarantee for 14 days. So you can try my ad space with confidence. Know that you get a full refund if you're not content. Will you cover all A-level content? Okay, uh, I think we briefly spoke about this at the beginning. Uh, it's mostly year 13 content, but I will cover some year 12 content where appropriate. So for example, in thermodynamics and energetics, I'll be going through recapping AS energetics because you need it for A2 energetics, okay? So it's mostly year 13. So message our team on WhatsApp, put the word acid so we know you're on the live stream and that you're interested and see you all soon. Thank you very much. Ta-ta for now.